Well, I have a couple more authors for you to meet, so I'm going to keep you until about 15 minutes past the hour. Uh, hope you will stay with me for this one. Jane Van Brunt. Hello. Hello. How are you? So who has a nurse in the family? Who, uh, who there knows somebody? My sister is a nurse. I bet you all know someone who's a nurse. You're going to need to copy paste this URL. Jane's, Jane's book is The Nightingale Gene, Lessons to Living a Balanced Life and Having the Nursing Career of Your Dreams. So Jane, why did you write this book? Well, I felt like I had something to say to nurses and uh, caregivers all over the world that play nurses on TV, as you like to say. Um, I had a message to say specifically to women. Uh, we tend to be caregivers in general. And then on top of that, if you're a nurse and have inherited what I call the, night the nightingale gene, then you um, don't ever take care of yourself. And I learned that the hard way. So I wanted to tell a story about um, a an amazing profession. A profession that is about ready to be in a crisis. Yeah, I've heard it is in a crisis. Yeah, we'll be about a million and a half nurses short by the year 2020, just in the U.S. So it's a pretty scary thing. So it's an amazing profession. I want people to go into it. But also, we have to learn how to balance work and life in order to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to ask you a question from Trayvonda from Chicago. And the question is, how do you select the right pieces from your life to have the greatest impact in your book. So the book is in part about your life as a nurse. Mm -hmm. How did you know what to put in and what to leave out? Well, the main part, and I learned a lot too from Angela, because I wanted to first write a cathartic book. I just wanted to unload everything that had happened in my life. I wanted to tell people that nurses should know better. We should know better. We know everything about our bodies. We know everything. We take assess other people. We should know better than uh, to not take care of ourselves. And so I, um, I was very sick, got really sick. I knew it was coming. I could feel it, really stressed out, but I wasn't listening to my body, to all those other authors that can teach me mm. now how to listen to my body. So I fought through all that and worked really hard. I had a, a big corporate job, flying all the time, and I got very sick. And it was a wake-up call, but three weeks later, I was back to work. So instead of taking a break, I went straight back to work. So, so um, I'm going to ask you another question. And this one, I think, was something you sort of had to wrestle with and maybe use the process with. But we have a question that says, I have a lot of ideas that I want to turn into books, but I get hung up on how to write. How do I find the right path to do it? So you had multiple book ideas. How did you find that right path? I think that the first one of the things in my book I talk about is reflection through journaling. So I think that that practice, and it's a, it would be like a concentrated practice every day to just write down your thoughts. Set a timer. Angela taught us that too. Set a timer. Just write. And it really does help because then you can reflect on what has happened in your past that impacts your future, but also kind of gets you unstuck and moving forward. Okay, and I'm going to ask you one more question because um, you have just gone through this process of writing a book, getting it out there. Mm -hmm. Nursing, not necessarily a profession known for writing. You're writing, you're doing charts. Mm -hmm. So you probably, I'm guessing, felt uncomfortable. It's not like you'd spent a career writing. You weren't a journalist or something coming into this. So when you don't think of yourself as a writer and you don't, and you don't know how good your writing is, how did you manage fears of, like, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe mm -hmm. I'm not a good enough writer? Well, that's a huge part of it, too. And uh, nurses do write a lot. They have to write a lot of thesis papers and, you know, tons of research papers in school. Very boring. My really. sister, I think, was busy in chemistry <laughs> right, class. Right, she was right. always avoiding writing. Yes, it's awful. So that's not what the writing should be. But what I found is a lot of nurses, and I would love to do a study on this, a lot of nurses are actually very artistic. Mm. And so um, to find their avenue, whether it's jewelry, design, um, sewing, art, um, one of the things that they, we see a lot of is writing. So they're very creative people in general. So that part it wasn't hard for me. What was hard for me was to stick on one topic. Mm. So I did have a second book. I wrote it first. And Angela said, um, no, not the right one this time. So it's it's out there, uh, ready to go. But we'll do that next. Yeah. We'll do that one next. So um, yes, being very specific about what I needed to do in my first message was nursing is an amazing profession. 
but we have to learn how to manage our work and our life um, because it, there is a natural tendency, that genetic inheritance, to care for everybody else but yourself. Love it. Well, let's show them right now the Nightingale Gene, Lessons to Living a Balanced Life and Having the Nursing Career of Your Dreams by Jane Van Brent. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining me on the red carpet.